Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to do a full video on how to successfully grow eggplant in your garden. And I'm kind of starting backwards. It's late September, these are doing really well, and we're going to work our way back from nice sized plants, great production, all the way to transplanting them into the ground. And this is how you can generally grow eggplant that are going to look like this. I have a couple varieties in there. You're going to see a white dust on there. That's insect powder. It's the morning. You can hear the water going. We're going to wash that off. So we have some petite small eggplant that grow in clusters. These are perfect about this size. You would pick them and you can cut them up, cut them in half, stir fry them, use them how you wish. Then I have bigger eggplant. This one's ready to come off. When you're harvesting eggplant, you do not want to pull on it. You will break the branches. You either twist it until it pops and you just can just keep twisting here it break and then don't tug it keep twisting and then it'll come right off or you can use scissors and cut it off but these plants will break easily you can see all the eggplant that are starting to come in on this side different variety just about to size that one back there Let's see if we can get to it is ready to go we have the long version Japanese style eggplant all doing extremely well especially for late September more eggplant in there I think there's a large one around this way we won't twist that one off that took a bit of time but cut it off great for eggplant Parmesan you can see the plants going to fall over from the weight so you definitely want to stake them up and tie them up they're fragile plants, so if you don't do that, the weight of the eggplant are going to pull the branches down and it's going to break them. So on the plant, I have dust. I put this dust on late evening when I need to, after the pollinators go away, and then we're gonna come and we're gonna wash this off early morning before the pollinators return. The main issues with eggplant, you can start finding small holes and yellowing. I've been taking care of it, it kinda looks a little bit like this these small holes those are from flea beetles that's old flea beetle damage down there and you can see the yellow and dots if you look on these leaves you can see the black specks are actually moving those are flea beetles and every year that I've grown eggplant I get them end of story and if I don't treat them with something very effective they will chew holes in my eggplant and it really damages the plants I actually planted this eggplant yesterday so it didn't really take that long for the flea beetles to show up. Flea beetles are notorious for overtaking your eggplant, putting in tons of small holes, yellowing the leaves. The only way I found to deal with it is insect dust. They hop around, the dust kills them at night, wash the dust off. So, and I want to stress this, the dust goes on late evening, even as it's getting dark, cover the leaves, that will take care of most of the problem. Do that every three days for about three rounds and you get rid of your problem and then keep an eye on it when you see the flea beetles return do it again you don't have to keep putting dust down if you don't have insects specifically the flea beetle so clean off the leaves early morning before the pollinators come and you'll be good to go so that's the main way I really deal with insect insect problems. I'm in Maryland Zone 7. Flea beetles seem to be the biggest problem. Sometimes you get snails and slugs which will chew in larger holes. Iron phosphate every 10 to 14 days sprinkled around your garden will kill off snails and slugs and again that's iron phosphate. You can get any variety that you'd wish. I also like to spray peppermint oil on the undersides of the leaves. I do that after I conclude a round of the insect dust. The insect dust that I use is an organic Captain Jack's dead bug dust. You can use any dust you wish. All insect dusts are non-discriminate killers so it's going to kill good insects and bad insects so just use it wisely. So after I would go through putting down the dust, do two or three rounds, I'd like to get the peppermint oil which is one gallon of water, two tablespoons of peppermint oil, and one tablespoon of the Castile type soaps. And the soap allows you, let's fix this a little bit. The soap allows you 
to disperse the oil through the water when you give it a shake. And what you're doing here is you're spraying the undersides, the top sides, any soft body insect, even the flea beetles, don't like that oil, don't like the scent, and that helps repel them from your plants. And you would do this every seven to 14 days, depending on need. These plants stayed nice and healthy following that method, and they're producing well into September. Now, the setup is key. This is just your standard raised bed. Nothing special in the soil. I added in um, maybe some peat moss just to loosen up my clay soil. And these are planted about, you can see one over there, one over there, foot and a half apart, 12 inches to 18 inches, sometimes a little bit closer. They're gonna do really well. Now to set it up, I grow my own transplants. I have videos on that. If you'd like to look it up, you can see you know how to grow transplants indoors or you can buy them and you're buying them when they're about six or eight inches tall and it's real easy you just dig a hole about the size of this container loosen up the soil and we're going to put in three to five tablespoons of any organic fertilizer now this is cottonseed meal it does not have to be cottonseed meal don't go running around looking for cottonseed meal it's hard to find it's just your basic organic fertilizer and that's the whole point this actually has a 621 NP and K you want something that's closer to like a 555 but it doesn't matter if you're off a little bit low or a little bit high you want N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and you're putting in three, four, five tablespoons into the hole, and then you're gonna mix it well all the way through. If your soil is kind of heavy clay, a couple handfuls of cocoa core or peat moss will really keep it loose. That will get your plant established. And then you just plant it right to the level of the container, the transplant, right in there, drop your stake next to it, water it in, and then you also wanna use, at this point, to get these off to a great start is a water-soluble organic fertilizer. And the water-soluble organic fertilizer I used this year was miracle Grow Organics. Some people don't like that company, pick a different product. In the bottom right corner you can see NP and K, 1138, 11 nitrogen, P is for phosphorus, a 3 phosphorus, and an 8 potassium. Uh, miracle Grow likes to put a high nitrogen in. High nitrogen is going to get a lot of leaf growth and that's great for when you're putting your eggplant in at your transplant stage. So you can go ahead and use this at full strength. That will help establish your plant. That will get the leaves growing. You really can look for a water-soluble organic fertilizer that's, again, with numbers around a 555. It's okay if it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I'm just saying you don't need this much nitrogen. You can use it if you want. It's not going to really hurt much. Water-soluble fertilizer is fertilizer that mixes with water. You pour it onto the plant leaves, into the root system, and it's immediately available to your plant. So this is going to get right to the roots. It's going to get into the plant. It's going to help them grow leaves, help them get established. Your organic granular fertilizer like this, blood meal, bone meal, any kind that you use, is a slow release. Those granulars have to mix into the soil. Soil biology has to start breaking them down, and then it's slowly available to your plant. So you're using a combination of both. So I would use the water-soluble fertilizers about every 14 to 21 days, depending on how your plants look. If they're looking pretty good, you don't need to use it. If they're looking a little uh, maybe yellow or growing a little bit slowly, you can do the organic water-solubles more often. Mid-season, these got in in May. In July, I do a top dressing, which is basically taking, I just take a handful, but that's about four or five tablespoons Go about six inches away from the stem, you can see the stem back there, and just sprinkle it around. Your top dressing, the granular fertilizer, rain will wash it into the soil. That will give it a feeding of a slow release fertilizer over the rest of the season. And that's generally how you set up your eggplant for the season. Nothing fancy. These are the ways that I fed them, took care of insects, and prevented insects. And the plant did, all the plants did really, really well. Hope this gives you some confidence in growing eggplant. Slow and low feeding. Keep an eye on the flea beetles and you should have a great crop come next season. Thanks so much for watching and please check out my YouTube videos.